All right. So we're going to talk about, in section 2.3, dividing polynomials. And to do this, let's take a step back and look at dividing numbers. So if we're going to do A divided by B, in general, we come up with the following, that A divided by B is some quotient plus a remainder, which it remains divided by B. Or you could write it out multiplying both sides by B. You could write this out as A equals the quotient, Q, times B, the denominator, plus a remainder. So Q is our quotient, and R is our remainder. And of course, we don't want you know, B to be zero, and we can say things like, well, the remainder is going to be somewhere between um, zero and B, but it's not going to be any larger than B. And this is what we get when we divide numbers. Dividing polynomials is going to look very, very similar to this. So instead of numbers, though, we're just going to have polynomials in x. So if we divide two polynomials, say a of x and b of x, So again, hearkening back to A divided by B, it's just now we've got some variable over, over which A and B are polynomials. Well, we're going to have quotients and remainders here. That A of X over B of X is going to be some quotient polynomial plus a remainder polynomial divided by the denominator. And the other way, perhaps the more useful way of writing this, would be to multiply both sides by b of x. So we have the polynomial a of x is the quotient polynomial q of x times b of x plus a remainder. So now our quotient and remainder are polynomials, just like instead of these, instead of A and B being numbers, A and B are polynomials. Well, if A and B become polynomials, then Q and R become polynomials as well. So Q becomes the quotient polynomial, and R becomes the remainder polynomial. And what we can say about R is that its degree is smaller than B. That the degree of R of X is strictly smaller than the degree of B of X. So dividing polynomials is very much like dividing numbers. But the thing is, is something very interesting happens when you pick a very special kind of denominator. So, let's say for instance, b of x is just x minus some number. If b of x is just x minus a number, then what happens here is the following. a of x now becomes q of x times b, which in this case is x minus some number. And then we have r of x. But the degree of B, the degree of 
x minus some number is just 1. So the degree of x minus any number is simply 1. And the only thing that has degree less than 1 is a constant polynomial. So if b is linear, if b has degree 1, r has to be another number. So we get a of x being q of x times x minus some number plus r. There's no more x's on r because r of x is just one particular number, which we're just going to leave as r. And this gets us to some of our first few theorems that we see in section 2.3, that if we plug this particular number in, what we get out on the right-hand side is the quotient of that number times the number minus itself plus r. Well, the number minus itself is 0. And 0 times anything is just 0. And so a of this particular number is the remainder when dividing by this. This is called the remainder theorem. That when you divide a polynomial by some x minus a number, so we'll call it c, given a name, so dividing any polynomial, say a of x, by some x minus c, by, by an x minus some number, has a remainder of exactly a of c, a of that number. So we end up with two ways of evaluating a function. We can either evaluate a function by plugging in the number, or we can evaluate the function by dividing that polynomial by x minus the number and looking at the remainder. And one particular instance is, well, what happens when this remainder is zero? When you have a zero remainder, remember back when we were dividing numbers. When the remainder is zero, we say that b divides a. b goes into a nicely that b is a factor of a. Well, we can say the same thing here, that if our remainder is 0, then what we divided by was a factor of the polynomial that was our numerator. And this is called the factor theorem, that dividing or excuse me, that a polynomial, any polynomial a of x has a zero or an x-intercept or a root, all those mean the same thing, has a zero at x equals c if and only if x minus c is a factor of a of x. If x minus c, when you divide x minus c into a of x, you get a zero remainder. 